I hear, and it's hereby confirmed that you are in a celebration mode. Yes. Are you? Yes. Shiloh at two, are we? Yes. Can we give it a try? You know the climax will be next Sunday. Shiloh at two, are we there? Yes. In a celebration mode. Yes. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. This is a very, it's a great moment. And I want to believe we are busy counting our blessings, naming them one by one. You just need to look the last two years. Those of us who are here from the very first day when it was launched. And you who have joined us along the way, I love the kingdom. Those who came in the morning, those who came in the evening, the pay is the same. So you are entitled to celebrate what was there before you came and what you have seen. One more time, celebrate Jesus. Amen, amen. Counting your blessings. Your, your, your personal list of, of, of thanksgiving is very personal. Because you are the only one who knows the work you have had with Jesus. That is why it's not optional to be grateful. Thanksgiving is a lifestyle. It should be a lifestyle. Because the Lord keeps on doing things even now. Can you imagine the many people who are not here, not by choice? Some of them are in hospital beds. Some of them are on machines. Some of them are not only on machines, they have bro broken legs. I was telling the youth service, Sometimes the hospital has a way of bringing you down to reality. When you walk there and you see somebody, they can't walk, and as if that's not enough, they have tied some stones, I don't know what they are called, to your leg so that the bones can hold back together. And you are told you are not supposed to make any movement for complete healing. And here you are. You walked yourself to church. No wheelchair. Never mind, you never drove. But you walked. You used your do the fire. Or loot 11. Or Anuba. All said and done, you are here. Can we celebrate Jesus? Meaning everybody this morning here listening to me has a listen to be grateful. You look back to your week, you are the only one who know the work you have had with the Lord. And that is why, because I had, I know that you are in that celebration mode. That's why in the next few minutes, I want us to share on a topic I am calling, be thankful and say so. I don't want to add to add at be thankful. I'm saying be thankful and say so. Now how shall we know? How shall we know? We can't read your mind. We don't know what happened in your house last night. We don't even know that you had no food. And then a friend visited. Hey, be thankful and say so. Psalms 100 verse 4. Uh, I don't know whether we have that version. Amplified version, classic. This is what the Bible says. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and a thank offering. And to his courts with the praise. Be thankful and say so to him. Bless and affectionately praise his name. Very elaborate on the requirements or on the how you need to enter into the presence of the Lord. Number one, you enter with thanksgiving and a thank offering. And then enter his court with the praise. Be thankful and say so. In other words, you are entering and we know what you are praising God about. Being so round about what God has done for you. And we know of many people in the word of God, when God did it for them, they didn't care about the protocol. All they knew is that God has done it, and the world needs to know, and the world needs to hear, 
And now as we talk that we are about to celebrate two years, I pray that your neighborhood need to know until they ask you, Nashiro ni nini? Let's not assume. Not everybody knows what, what is Shilo at your place of breakthrough from. Hey, did you know that a question is a very good starting point? Questions give you an opportunity to tell somebody about it. It's no wonder the Bible says um, that the children were of Israel, the Lord used to tell them, write it down. And when your children will ask you why, you will tell them the why. You will tell them one time, for, for 400 years we were slaves. And God, our God, came and saved us. You need to be so full of thanksgiving until somebody asks you, now why are you so happy? I'm so happy we are at two. Hallelujah. And they wonder two. And we are ten. But I am not ten. I am two. Celebrate your ten, I'll celebrate my two. Shiloh at two. This time around I hear from very reliable sources that we are not inviting the mother church. They, because maybe they'll come and start telling us that they are turning 40. Now they are making our two look so little. We want to celebrate on our own and say we are a two. Yes. And I like that. Yes. There is time to be united, in quotes. I know we are one church, two, but now there will be a confusion. We are telling them we are two, they are saying we are a 40. Now two and 40 look such a, a difference. I love the children. They are turning one. They don't even know what you are talking about. But they'll just celebrate there is a cake. Hey, let's celebrate. Shiloh are two. We can celebrate Jesus. Today should be a warm-up. And the Bible says, enter his gates. Thank, be thankful and say so. The same version, the same verse in the message version, it says, enter with the password. Thank you. Make yourselves at home. Talk in praise. Thank him. Worship him. We all know the importance of a password. Let me tell you. You forget the password of your phone. It doesn't matter whether it's Samsung. It is Wi-Fi. iPhone. Which is the other one? It doesn't matter the make. Imagine you'll be like someone who does. Actually the one with the Murikamwizi is better than you. If you forget your password. And the Lord does not want us to forget. To say thank you anytime we want to enter. Thank you before God gives you a, a breakthrough. It gives you the right to enter. You forget the password. And you have got millions in your bank account. You will sleep hungry. When you forget to be thankful. And to say so. You can go hungry. Unfortunately, we read this, but when it comes to application, when you enter, you already have a dementia. Or can, can I say partial dementia? You have forgotten what God has done, but you can remember what you want. I come again. Partial dementia. You have conveniently forgotten what God has done, but you have got a very wrong list of the things you want. I want more. I want more. But because you want to look a Christian, and you want to look like you, are, you know the language Christianese, at the end of your prayer, you want to say, and Lord, when you do all these things, we will be careful to give you thanks and praise. Excuse me. Giving God conditions that you will only be careful to give him thanks and say so. When he meets your demand, Shiloh at two, you cannot give God conditions. The evidence is so loud. Even if they wanted to ignore us seriously with all these cars, they know here there are only trees. Whether they like it, even if they close their eyes, they will be. It is so loud. Can we amplify it with our voices? We are thankful and we are saying so in Jesus' name. Remember, our password, can I say for the next one week, as Shiloh family, should be thank you.
that God, you have been so good. We started when we were facing this way. Then we realized we, were, we couldn't know the people who were seated this way because of the light. We decided to make it larger. We started facing this way. And we don't, and we know where God is taking us is even higher. And let me tell you, when you are thankful, you are telling God, I'm ready for more. Are you ready for a cathedral? Are you ready for a big cathedral? I am telling you the password is thank you for what we have already received. Be thankful and say so. And that was thematic. In the book of 1 Chronicles chapter 16 verse 8 and 9, the Bible says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Hold it there. Make known his deeds. They don't know. You should be the ones telling them. When we entered there, it is, oh, that is so, for how long have you been there? You know, some of us, by the grace of God, we started in a self-contained house. I know I have witnesses in the house. And maybe now you're in a one-bedroomed house. How will we know that you are so grateful? They are happy about their mansions, but I'm not yet there. I have my life and I am grateful I am in a one-bedroomed house or I am still in a single room but a bigger one. I can be able to put a curtain across and because it is my house, I will name the rooms marked by a curtain. That is my bedroom and that is my kitchen and you are welcome to my home. Be grateful and say so. Be thankful with no apologies. And this is what... The Bible says, oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. In verse 34 of the same chapter, First Chronicles, it says, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Did you know that there is no day you will wake up and find it is minus the love of God? His mercies are new every morning. First Thessalonians 5.18 Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. I know I am talking to majority of us, we are believers. And many a times you have found yourself asking the Lord to reveal to you his will. Do I have witnesses in the house? You have ever asked the Lord to reveal to you his will. I am here with the good news. He has already re revealed part of his will. And part of his will, give thanks in all circumstances. Acknowledging that in the past he has done something. And even for the future, for the circumstance which is not present in your sight, he's about to do it because he is God. So from today, we will obey and do what is revealed even as we await for him to continue reviewing, revealing his will for us. It is already revealed. Be thankful and say so. I like God because he uses what we experience every day to teach us about himself, he who lives in heaven. It's no wonder he says you can't say that you love him and you cannot love a sister or a brother whom you can see. So how we live here makes us understand him more. And I'm here to remind us that God loves it when we say thank you. You also love it when people tell you thank you. When you do something good to somebody and it is like, it is like you, under, you didn't see. You just wake up and you feel like blessing one of your friends or blessing your neighbor or blessing your relative and you send them an m -pesa. you send them 10K and then you're expecting them to acknowledge. You wait that day, they don't say. The following day, they don't say. And you wonder. Thank God for m -pesa because it brings back the message you can see sincerely speaking this money was credited to this number. And then you call. And then somebody on the other side, Oh, I didn't tell you. Imagine I got it. How do you feel if you are the giver? Okay. You, you forgot that you got a gift. Something is not adding up. 
Actually, I once listened to a, a testimony in Hope FM, and a sister was giving a testimony how she sent some money to a, a relative, and the relative never acknowledged. When she called to just confirm, this is what the relative said, oh, that 10,000, you forgot to put there the transaction charge. Excuse me. Are you sure you are thankful? And many a times we are like this, that person. I know you have just loved. How many times have you told God, I had asked for 50, you gave me 20. I will wait for the next 30, then I'll come and say thank you. A, be thankful and say so. Because when you acknowledge you encourage God, just like you, en you are encouraged when you, be a, you are kind to somebody and they acknowledge. It mirrors back to us how God likes it when we acknowledge him. A grateful heart is so important to God. And the Bible is very explicit in instructing us how to go before the Lord. Actually, in Psalms 95 verse 2, it says, Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Hold it there. Some of us, when we get there, we read, let us come into his presence with complaints. Let's come with his in his presence with our needs. There is room for petitions. But first things first, can you acknowledge what you have already received? The Lord is that exact. He tells us how. And the good thing, he tells us what he wants. I was, telling, I was telling the first service here that one time where I used to work, there was a function. And three of us were given a responsibility to go and buy a gift for a chief manager. Let me tell you. See, we went around the city of Nairobi. Because we would go to a shop, then we wonder, if we buy this one, this, actually one, one had been to her house. So she would say, this one, she has several. So we go to the next one. We went round. We didn't find in town. So we went to Sarit Center. We went round looking for a proper gift. Imagine the king of kings. He's telling you the gift he wants. And you can afford it. To be grateful. To be thankful. You can. After all, you are the recipient of the many blessings. You, he says it is acceptable. The sacrifice of your ribs. The attitude of gratitude makes God happy. I pray that from today, you will not be like us that day. Well, finally, I don't even know what we bought. But we went around the CBD. Shop to shop. Try to see. So now we would see, look at the things. Then we try to put ourselves in her shoes. And then we try to imagine whether she would appreciate. We say, no. Let's go and look in the next shop. We went around. But the king of kings... Come in my presence with thanksgiving. It is acceptable. And let me tell you, when you enter there and you are praising him, you are thanking him, you are assured of his presence. And in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. There is also hope for those other things that you are expecting from him. And remember, each one of us can afford. Tell your neighbor you can afford thanksgiving. Ah, tell the other one. You know, some of you are just, I'm saying you tell the neighbor you are looking at me. I can't hear. Tell that other one on that side. Maybe look like she has got an attitude of gratitude. Just see whether she's in a mood of talking. Be thankful and say so. You need to say so because nobody can read your mind. But God can read. But you and me, we are in this world. So very quickly. A few benefits of being grateful and being thankful. Number one, thankfulness glorifies God. Thanking God is an amazing accomplishment. It is about acknowledging the giver and not the gift. Did you hear what I said? Being thankful, you are acknowledging the giver. But a number of us, when we receive the gift, we take off. Yet, the Bible says that he inclines his ear to hear our petitions. He hears and he answers. Once he answers you, instead of going back to be thankful, 
You take off until you need some more. Actually, <laughs> thank God he is God and we are not. Because some of us would say, you are back here. In the morning you are here. You asked me to watch over you. You asked me to, give, to provide for you a matatu. You asked me to watch over you while you go and there are some demonstrations in town. I have done all that. Even as you are walking, you could not even acknowledge. You are only say, where? When I saw what was happening on the other, and I started smelling tear gas, we decided to turn the other chochoro. Hey, you have already started taking the credit. Then in the evening, you are back there with another wrist. And then you say, and when you do all this, we'll be careful. Some of these statements should not come out of our mouths because he deserves the glory all the time. Not because of what he has done. He is God. We are not. Thankfulness, number two, makes us humble. You are acknowledging it is him who has done and not you. And you know what the Bible says in the book of James, chapter 4, verse 10? Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. When you acknowledge that it is God, the Lord approves you. The Lord sees you are ready for more. The Lord sees you are a mature. By the way, being thankful is a sign of maturity. Being thankful is a sign of maturity. Getting down and acknowledging that it is him. He owns everything. 1 Corinthians 4, 7 says, For who makes you differ from another? And what do you have? that you did not receive. Now if you indeed re receive it, why do you boast as if you had not received? When we pray and the Lord gives us, and the good thing with God, he gives us even what we have not asked. But when we receive, we act like we are the ones in charge. That shall not be our portion. Let us never ever forget that everything that we have, everything that we own, Everything that we are comes from him. Actually, James puts it very well in James 1, 16 and 17. It says, so don't be misread, my dear brothers and sisters. Whatever is good and perfect is a gift coming down to us from God, our Father, who created all the rights in the heavens. He never changes or casts a shifting shadow. So when we give thanks, a sign of maturity is a sign of humility. Number three, thankfulness puts us right in the middle of the will of God. You remember I had said earlier, the Bible says that in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. So whenever you are thanking God, you are at the center of the will of God. So thankfulness possessions you right at the center of the will of God. Number four, being thankful is a confirmation that you have not forgotten your previous condition and status. You have not forgotten that last month you asked God to provide house rent. You have never acknowledged and next week is the end of the month, and then you show up. But when we are thankful, you are telling God, I have not forgotten. And I like the past, uh, this song which says, you are too faithful. So whenever you are giving thanks, you are telling God, you have been faithful in the past. Actually, the book of Revelation says that his other name is faithful and true. God is faithful and true. So whenever you are thanking God, you are acknowledging you, are, can, you can still remember he has been very very good. So many times we are so serious, committed and loud when asking God to help us. <laughs> a friend of mine took her and her unsaved brother to a, for a kesha. Because he came to visit her when she was leaving for a Kesha. Now that you have come, let's just go to, for the Kesha. So the brother agreed, they went. So in the morning as they were driving home, 
my friend asked the brother, so how did you find the Kesha? This was the response. The Kesha was very nice. Ah, that means you people know how to command God. Now when it is said in my mother tongue, you know, you really, it was, you are a commanding God. You forgot you are not God. And you know some of us, we are so loud as we claim it in Jesus' name. I'm telling you, the devil was a person, not a spirit. The amount of saliva he would receive from some of us. As we claim it and command God, sometimes you don't know whether you are talking to the devil or to God. There are so many commands, you know. And you know, giving thanks sobers you down. You know whom you are addressing. And as you come with specific things for which you are grateful, there is no mistake. You know whom you are addressing. Because it is him who healed you. How I pray that we will allow thanksgiving to sober us down, calm us down. You are not in a hurry to take off. You want to take reflections and acknowledge the many other things that God has done. Thanking God has a way of toning you down until you come to reality. And very quickly, I want us to look at this story in the book of Luke chapter 17. And we'll read it together. Luke 17, it will read from verse 11 to 19 in amplified version. And because now it is not as cold, I don't want you to sleep because you had dressed warm. So we are all going to read and make use of our school fees. Hallelujah. So can we read together? He was passing along the border. In this story, let me say this. If you are a rapper during that time, you are not supposed to mix with other people. You are supposed to live out, out there. But these rappers we are leading, they were together. Ten of them, birds of the same feather. And they, they, both, they all agreed to shout at God, to shout at Jesus, Jesus, have mercy. The Bible says they were so loud. United in problem. I pray Shiloh family will not be united by, by problems. We will be united in thanksgiving because God has been good to us. These rappers were so united. They walked together even when they talked to, to Jesus. And they were told to go and show themselves to the priest. They still walked together. But on the way, one of them looked around and realized, I have been miracu uh, miraculously, I have been healed. And she, he decided to go back. He remembered a few minutes ago, or is it a few hours ago, I was asking Jesus to heal me. Now I am healed. I am going back. I know I am talking to people, and I am one of them who have asked God, and there's no time to go back. It is Thanksgiving on the go, in the car, 
That's when I'll be telling Jesus, thank you. We are laughing at this nine. And Jesus asked, let me tell you, Jesus also knew maths. He had already counted and seen there are ten. So when he saw one, he asked, where are the nine? I thought you were nine of you. Where are the nine? I want you to look at your neighbor and ask your neighbor, are you the one or are you among the nine? Okay, let's bring it closer. Let's go back to this morning. Forget about those other days. It's okay. You might not even keep count. This morning. Are you the one? Did you find yourself near where there, near where God is? Near telling him thank you for the many things he has done for you. Waking up early on a Sunday, the 21st of July. Or you are among the nine. You prayed last night with your family or alone and asked the Lord to watch over you and asked the Lord to give you a peaceful and a restful night. He actually did exactly that. But in the morning, Lord, I pray that as I go to church, you will watch over me. It will not rain. Lord, you can do something about this. Ah, sasa ibari denial. You know, it was a mixture of everything. So are you the one? Are you the one who, who went back to Jesus? Or you are among the nine? Ask your neighbor. Look, ask the other one. I want you to talk to each other. Let's talk. Let's talk. <laughs> Unfortunately, not giving thanks lads us in another problem. You will find yourself complaining Glabbling, jealous, you are wondering why God does not hear your prayers. Not being thankful opens another door. And immediately that door of ungratefulness is opened, many other things enter. Complaining, taking God for granted, being so bitter. That you have been praying, you have been waiting upon God for the last 20 years. He has not yet shown up. Yet he has shown up for so and so. You have opened that door. And immediately that door is not opened. That is not the end. You start talking like the devil. Ask me how. The devil is the one who will speak that kind of a language. Complaining. God doesn't like that language. Actually, in the book of Numbers, there's a time the children of Israel complained and God was fed up with them. The Bible says the earth opened and 23,000 were swallowed for committing the sin of complaining and murmuring against God. So it's a very serious affair. No wonder the Lord has picked it and says, enter into my courts with a thanksgiving. Maybe you have them, but have you given them? Have you ever asked yourself why it's, we are saying thanksgiving? You are holding them. How do I know you are holding them? You are the one who has received the blessings. Can you give them back to God? Give them to your spouse. Your spouse did something, and you have assumed him. Imagine he will stop giving you, or she will stop giving you. If you want to be given again, learn to appreciate. Do I have witness in the house? When you appreciate, you are encouraging the person to do it again. When you assume and you conveniently forget, somebody gets disappointed. Jesus got disappointed and asked, where are the nine? I said, when you are not grateful, you become a Christian with a mentality of entitlement. You know, you are entitled. So when you are not given, it's a big deal. But when you are given, it's a small deal. Shiro at two, we will celebrate that we are two. And open the door for Jesus to help us celebrate the third the fourth, the fifth, and those many other years. And every year will come in another glory because God is good. Amen. 
I like the, when, when this man was healed, the, the one we have just talked about, verse 15, maybe you can project for us. I like the drama, this repress. No one, he said, remember a few hours ago or minutes ago, he was a rapper. Again, he was a Samaritan. But he picked on one thing that Jesus loved, being grateful. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, glorifying and praising and honoring God with a loud voice. That is the description. In the other version, it says, one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, glorifying and praising and honoring God with a loud voice. Verse 16, I loved it. And he lay face down at Jesus' feet, thanking him over and over. He was a Samaritan. Do you know all you need is a grateful heart? The Lord will not look whether you are a kamba, whether you are a brother, whether you are a short or tall, whether you come from back of beyond. Whether, you know some of us come from places where the Google map, when they get there, they say unknown road. But let me tell you, you approach the king of kings with a thankful heart. He notices you and not the nine. Imagine all of us qualifies this rapper, in spite of his previous status, in spite of where he came from, Samaria, in spite of having been repressed, he came back and made Jesus proud. And he honored him. He praised him. He rode over and over. He couldn't thank him enough. He thought thanking him while studying is not enough. He decided, I can fall face down. I can roar over. You are the only one who knows what God has done for you. You are the only one you are entitled to your own style you are entitled to your own style you have to be thankful and say so with no apologies when he does it for you celebrate him in your own style i am wondering where this rep rapper had seen the, this kind of a celebration i want to believe it was very original now imagine people used to know him as a rapper and now he's so loud. Did you, did you see that? Was that in your Bible? That he was so loud. He was so loud. Mara, he is praising. He's thanking. He's honoring. He is face down. He's rolling over. Your thanks are very personal. You are the wearer of the shoe. You are the one who knows what God has done for you. You owe no one no apologies. You can celebrate God. You can celebrate God. And you don't have to look for anybody's approval. You are the one who has been blessed. You have been remembered. You can roll over on the floor. Hey. And I think Jesus was loving the drama. No wonder he was asking, where are the nine? Maybe he was swishing. I wish there were five. Five roaring on the floor, telling me they are grateful. You can be the other one. Hey. You can be the other one. Maybe you are not a rapper, but you know this month you didn't have a job. The Lord has done it for you. Maybe you know last month you had not promotion. You have been promoted. Maybe you know you are wishing that this year you will graduate. Last week you graduated. You can celebrate. And your celebration should be original. The celebration of this rapper was very original. We are yet to see another one. You are studying, you are loud, you are on the floor, you are honoring, you are thanking, you are praising, and you owe nobody no apologies. And you know others there, those who are watching, some of us are, are them are still wondering. Um, this one sees the rapper from Samaria. And you know they, they, they hated Samaritans so much that they could not even pass through their, their country. But this man had nothing to care. Do they know how it feels to be separated from your family members? Do they know what it means that you cannot go to a supermarket? Do they know what it means that yesterday you had five fingers, you wake up, you have got two? Do they know what it means? You are the only one who knows what God has done for you. And you need to celebrate Jesus. It is all about your attitude 
and your relationship. Not about where you come from and not about your status. Jesus will never ask you, are you married? Jesus will never ask you, what is your education level? Jesus will never ask you, where is your pay slip? You just qualify to take yourself. And Jesus, I'm so happy today. I've woken up feeling so nice and I don't even know why I'm nice. Have you ever... ever... <laughs> Two weeks ago, the Lord did something in my family. I was telling my children and my husband, I am trying to put my, my lips together. <laughs> Utumia, you know, I am trying to put my ribs together and I find they have opened. <laughs> then they were telling me, Ati, I'm too loud. <laughs> that time I didn't even know, by the way, I would come to preach here. So the, in the family group, they were saying, I should, Nyabura will tell you what she told me. I should be um, appointed to be. <laughs> Yani, you are just happy. And I was telling them, let me tell you. I'm the one who knows what it means to wait for this long, and then God does it. Then you are telling me to keep quiet. If you are a refu I will do it. And you are entitled to celebrate your own style. Allow me to be me. I will celebrate. If he does it for you, if you will be like me, and the ribs sometimes refuse to come together so that you may look contained Come and correct it. Ah, I don't need it. I want to celebrate God for what he does. If you know, you know. <laughs> if you don't know, you can ask me. See me later. I'll tell you. But when he does it, I owe nobody no apologies. I am the one who knows the, the extent to which I've masked for that miracle. I am the one who knows. Maybe that's a testimony for another day. But when God does it, he does it. There are some of those miracles where you go and pick some soil and talk to the soil and tell the soil, you cannot keep my blessing. And the soil responds, this is your blessing. And then you tell me to keep quiet? Ah, no way. I will praise him. I will shout it. If you don't want, it is okay. You are entitled to your own opinion. Allow me to express my thanksgiving to God. Hallelujah. In other words, many times we are quiet when we are supposed to be speaking. I pray that the Lord will help us to know when to keep quiet and when to thank God and say so. And with that, I want to welcome the worship team. And I'm hoping they are around. And they will help me sing this, confess this. Because I want you to ensnare yourselves. Shiloh at two, I want you to ensnare yourself by making this confession. I will not be silent. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want to invite you to stand up. Even as we sing this song, and this one now is the practical part of it, that you will not be silent. We will make the confession. And then after making the confession, I'll give you a minute, and you start narrating to God, not that he doesn't know, but he loves it when you tell him that you are acknowledging that he has done it. It is true there are things he is, you are still waiting on, but as you acknowledge what he has done, you are saying you are about to come. And I will not be silent. I will always Open your mouth. You are the recipients of the many blessings from God. As long Are you breathing? breathing? Are you breathing? I you cannot be silent. You cannot be silent. And it is okay. Be the loudest. You are the one who is not to silence.
shape you. One more last time, one last time. For the last time, lift your voice and say, I will not be silent, say, and I will not be silent. I will always lift your voice.
Father, receive my worship. Now, all of my, all of my worship. Father, it is my worship. All of my worship. Receive it all. We are going to repeat there. No one will worship him for you. There is no corporate here. This one is not corporate. It's very personal. So with that understanding, we are going to make that confession. No one will worship God for you. And no one can worship you for me. Say you, Lord, you are worthy. You, Lord, you are worthy. You are worthy. To open up the scroll, and no man can worship you. No one Come on, sing it together with us. Oh, for everything you've done for me. For all the things you've done for you've me. You've healed my body, Jesus. You've saved my soul, Lord. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, Come on, shy Lord, you set up. Lift it up and say, You Lord, you Lord, you are worthy. Say, You Lord, you are worthy. Oh, and no man can worship you. Yeah, Jesus, for all the things you've done for me. thankful and we want to proclaim it for the world to know because no one can worship you for us we are therefore bringing back the worship to you forgive us for the times we have taken it for granted forgive us for the times we have received and taken off like the nine forgive us but from today Lord I pray that you help us on daily basis to acknowledge what you do for each one of us we give you glory this morning, this morning, and we give you praise.